Hi guys, welcome back to my video. My name is Willie. Today I'm out here with my buddy Dave, his beautiful wife, and he's gonna teach you guys how to do some trolling. Uh, he's getting rigged up right now. I'm pretty much just gonna give it over to him, let him pretty much give you guys and tip on how to troll properly because I don't know how to. I've been trying to learn from him for a little while now. So I'm gonna pretty much just give him a camera, let him do his thing, and see if we can catch some fish. Stay tuned. All right, first we're gonna talk about the rod setup. You want an eight foot rod, seven and a half will do. You want a fast action tip so you see the bite. You don't want anything too hard because when that fish hits, he's gonna bend that rod. And you don't want that hard tip, you'll rip it right out of his mouth. What I like to use, gator lures right here or a king spoon all right my color of choice is green you're going to see that most of the stuff in this harbor is going to hit green okay i like to troll at about anywhere from three and a half for grouper to if i'm going to go for kingfish or spanish mackerel i'll pro troll up to eight okay also when you're trolling out here you don't want the rod like this it's not how you want it because what that's going to do is going to make the lure jump up out of the water unless you have a heavy lure of four ounces or more. What I use is this over here. All right, you could buy this. I think they're like $100 on Amazon. You put your rod in here like this, and if you want, like I do, I take this clip and clip it here. We're gonna show you what the setup is like as we're moving. All right, first step is putting them out. When you put them out, you want your longest first. Okay, that way they don't get tangled. count to about five. Put the nail. Now you want to set the drag to where you can just pull it. Like that. Sweet. Second one will count to three. And you don't have to clip them, but I like to clip them just in case the fish runs this way and I'm not seeing it. Because if you don't have a loud reel, you might not notice that the fish is on. If you have a loud reel, you're fine. My reels are not loud. So if I'm not paying attention for a second, that's when the fish is gonna hit and I'm gonna lose my rod. All right, the other thing is we gotta talk about rod action. What this rod is doing, the reason you have this soft tip, see the way she pumps? She's pumping back and forth. That means she's running real nice. All right, she's probably about, about a foot to two feet down in the water column and she's pumping along. Now, if you see that rod tip and it stops and it's just flat, you've got grass on it or something else or a very small fish. If you don't see that rod peeling out, bring it back in, check it, take the grass off, throw it back out. Nice. All right, if you're not getting any action on the top with these lures, don't worry about that. These X wraps right here from Rapala, I love these things. Now, I usually go with green or blue, anything to indicate a small mackerel. They seem to love it. Cobia will grab it, Jack's, Spanish mackerel will grab it as well. So put these down. And you want to put these about 50, maybe 50 feet behind the boat. Even 100 feet is okay. You want to run these a little slower though, around five knots. That way they'll stay down. And that way you're covering both sets of the water column. You got your top, you got your bottom. And you should get action on one of them. Because you troll with the spoon and the, the plug at the same time? Yeah, you want the plug closer to the boat than the spoons. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, you want to run slower with the spoon though. I mean with the plug. Nice. Spoons you can run faster up to eight knots. These you can't. They're gonna come up out of the water. Now how how deep in the water would it come with the spoons if you're running at eight knots? Well, each one of these is different. Like this is a 15, so this will run 15 feet deep. Nice. You can get 10, you can get 20. But we're in the harbor in around 12 feet of water. And okay. that's all you need. Now what kind of fish have you caught on these? I've caught grouper on these. I've caught uh, cobia, Spanish mackerel, kingfish, even a you know, blackfin tuna will hit these, but that's a little further out into Boca Grande right. at the right time. 
And also when you're trolling, if you have these anywhere close together and you go to turn around, you're gonna tangle them. But if you have these far enough away from each other, you could even make a 90 degree turn and you're fine. We do this all the time. Now, if you have a swimmer in there with it, deep lip swimmer, that you don't want to do. Only if you have two rods out on the sides. Now, when you're trolling, do you need to be at a certain tide, certain winds? How would you normally pick that? You don't have to do it at any certain given time out here. You can do this whenever you want. Now, I know when you're fishing on a pier and you want to fish with the current coming into a fish, fish are facing against the current. So you want to pull your bait against the current right in front of the fish and they get ambushed. That's not the case out here. These fish are going to turn and they're going to run for it. And usually when you're fishing for, let's say, Spanish mackerel, they're in a big ball down here killing bait. Do you see bait flopping around out here? Just go anywhere towards that bait and they're going to turn and smash the board. That's for sure. Now when you're trolling, what type of line do you typically like to use when you're trolling? When I'm out here in the harbor, I'll use anywhere from 20 to 40. 20 is the best, obviously, so they can't see it. When these Spanish mackerel come up, or you get king mackerel, they have real good eyesight. And they'll actually come up to the bait, look at it, and then hit it. If they see anything over 40, most likely they're not going to hit it. I usually like to do 20, keep my drag set pretty low. And these baits are big enough that they're not going to eat over top of that bait. Now, if you run through a school of mackerel, you might even get cut off where your braid is. That has happened to me plenty of times. Now, what, at what point would you want to use maybe wire leader or something like that for trolling? Or do you not use that for trolling? I don't use wire leader for Spanish mackerel. I'll use it for kingfish because they will bite you off. Because a lot of times they'll attack the bait from the side. And then they'll hit that line and, and you're done. And you're losing six bucks, ten bucks. So, and also, with these rods and these reels with your setups, you're using really light tipped rods. So when they hit it, they hit it hard and it pulls really fast. So you don't want a real heavy monofilament or a heavy leader because you break the tip of your rod. Well, you don't want that. Okay, so how fast do you typically go and when do you know how to adjust your speed? All right, what I'll do is I'll start out at five and if not get any bites, I'll go to five and a half, six. And if they're not that aggressive, then I'll go to eight. You know, you can go anywhere up there. I mean, if they're just slow, then they're gonna hit something slow. But if they're in the mood of feeding frenzy, then they're gonna want it fast. So that's what I'll usually do. And I'll switch it up after about 15 minutes or so. If I don't get a fish in this harbor in 15 minutes, then I know that I need to speed it up and change it up a little bit. Now, would you completely change your lures or? No, I won't change the lure at all. I'll just change the speed. That's really all that matters. Gotcha. Okay. That and like sense. I said, you can also use the diving lure. So if you're using your two out, out to the sides, and use your one diving lure, because they might not be on top. Like right now, we're just running two on the side. So we're only covering the top of the water column. If I want to see if they're feeding off the bottom, then I'll put my plug on, and I'll run down 10 feet. And sometimes I'll get them. I'll get them just on the bottom. Maybe I won't get them on top at all. So you got to figure it out and see where they're feeding at. And the swivel that you're gonna to wanna to use for these is a barrel swivel, okay? See how it turns? So it, that way, in the water, your bait doesn't flip around and float up to the top. And the same with the other one. With these, you still wanna use the barrel swivel. That way it doesn't twist your line. So then you're gonna notice that all your braid is gonna get all twisted up and it won't last long. All right, guys. We're gonna start another troll here. We went, made one pass. We didn't get anything on the first set of trolls, but we stopped, anchored up. We caught that small little bonnethead shark. Or what was that? Uh, what kind of shark was that one? Bonnethead. Yep, caught a small little bonnethead shark. Caught that on a, a piece of shrimp on the bottom with a little split shot. And now we're gonna start another troll. Probably gonna troll out to Boca. See if we can get anything now. He switched up the lures. He got a diver on one pole. And then he got his uh, little spoon on the other pole. We're gonna see if we can get on this one. Hopefully we can get something. Guys, stay tuned. Uh-oh, there it goes. Still on? Nice. Heck yeah. What do you think it is? 
Oh yeah, that's a nice macro, dude. Nice mac. So we know they were on the bottom. Yep. That's why it's always good to have one on the bottom. That's a big macro. Jeez, that's a big mac, dude. Yeah. Nice. That's kingfish size. Heck yeah. And what was that on? Gold spoon? Gold spoon. Nice. Heck yeah. Alright guys, we just got a nice finished mackerel on a gold spoon. Dave had one straight down the middle. I'm not sure how deep that was. We also got one out here on the left side and the right side. I think two greens on the right, left and right. And the goal straight down the middle. We had one on the left side, but he ended up coming off. So we're going to see if we can get another one real fast. Today's been a pretty good day. Caught some groupers, snappers up in the pass. Now we're trolling back in. See if we can get a couple of uh, Spanish mackerel for shark bait. Fish on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, get him. All right, so if you notice, we didn't slow the boat down because if you slow the boat down, the hook can rip out of the fish's mouth. So you want to always keep the boat moving. Keep the rod tip high. What do you think you got? A Spanish or Jack. Yeah? I was way back there. Wow. Yeah, he ran good. Good run. Woo! Looking like a big old Jack. Yep, yeah, Jack. No, no Mac. Big Mac. Mac. Two of them. Two? Is that two? No, that's, that's a big Mac. Is that one or two? That's, that's one. Oh my gosh, dude. That's a monster. That is huge, bro. Oh my gosh. Bro. That is a stud. Oh my gosh. Woo -wee. That's kingfish size right there. Wow. That is a stud. That's a stud. Wow. That's what you get. Woo! Heck yeah. All right, guys. Look at that right there. Big boy. Wow. All right, guys. I hope you liked that video. That was a nice video of me and my buddy Dave going out there and his wife trolling. Uh, we really want to do a video to show you guys how we troll and I'm just learning myself. He does it all the time. He brought that down from up north with him. People do it down here, but it's not as much as you guys think. And I thought it was just awesome to let you guys know how to go out there and troll, how to catch some fish while you're trolling, what to use while you're trolling. Guys, if you like this video, please do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up, hit that bell notification so you get notified every time I drop a video. Until the next time, tight lines. Peace.